Within a few miles of the American coast, the Olympic, sailing in a dense fog on a course set by the directional radio of the Nantucket, rammed the lightship which sunk in 30 seconds. Four of her crew went down with her, and of the seven picked up, three died shortly after being taken on board. The Olympic was undamaged, and flying her ensign at half-mast, she reached New York the following morning. Right now, it all happened so quick that we don't know just how it did happen. We were in the water before we knew it. We most all had our life preservers. Just that was a means of saving our life. I'm very sorry it happened. But we did our best. Our boats were away in very quick time. And uh, everything was done to what we could do for them. I later confirmed that with the, the captain. Death rides the waves. The lightship Nantucket as she looked before being rammed and sunk by the liner Olympic. Seven of the tiny vessel's crew lost their lives. With four survivors aboard, the Olympic arrives in New York Harbor. Little damage shows on our skyscraper prow that cut the smaller ship in two. The two captains, Binks of the Olympic left, and Braithwaite, injured commander of the lightship. You shake hands. A sailor to a sailor. Yeah. Roberts, an oiler, Perry, radio operator, and mate Mosher saved by the liner's lifeboats. The mate tells his story first. Well, it all happened so quick we had no chance to really know just how it did happen. We all had our life preservers. Good thing we did. Uh, well, at the time of the smash, I was in the red, the radio cabin. I had barely time to get on deck and swim for my life. I was sound asleep by the time of the crash. It's really a mystery that I come up so sudden. But the lifeboat crew was sure on a job at a time. You ready? There was a thick fog varying in invisibility from 100 to 200 yards. The Olympic had been proceeding under reduced speed since 5 in the morning, feeling her way toward the Nantucket lightship. The first warning that the passengers had of the disaster was when she suddenly reversed her engines and the throbbing of the ship. The most sinister feature which made them know that there must be a real accident was when they saw the bulkhead doors closing. These can be closed from the bridge. By the time the passengers had realized what was happening and had reached the side of the rail, the Nantucket had been struck and had already gone down. The Olympic had cut her clean in half. She had been freshly filled with oil and bound down by her two anchors fore and aft. She sank immediately. The Olympic had reduced speed. The Olympic had reduced speed so sharply that she came almost stationary in the midst of the wreckage. Peering down from her 90-foot rail, the first impression of the passengers was the rancid smell of oil and the peculiar smell of the acetylene gas from the light flares thrown over on the light boys. survivors, beside Captain Braithwaite, were in this port lifeboat. At about the same time, the starboard lifeboat returned, bearing another man whose gashed face and blue lips showed him to be already dead. For another... All right, all right, all right. The Olympic then proceeded on her course. Four men out of a crew of 11 had been saved. Three died in the boats or in the Olympic, and four were not found. Uh, she sank in less than a minute. There was little time to do anything. Uh, she sank in less than a minute. There was no time to do much. 
Uh, we uh, uh, we were in the water before we before we could, could realize what had happened. To you. Wait a minute, a little closer here. A little closer, a little closer, more. a little closer. Smile, breathe, breathe, smile. Captain, Captain, a little closer. Yes. Wait, watch it. Ah, will you? And you can say, you want to thank the Captain, you can say thank you to him, say what you want. Well, that's not talkies now? Yeah, well, yes, it is. Wouldn't you say something to the Captain, thanking him for. No, he's not thanking me. Okay. Yes, I'm not quite as old as you, but getting near it. 69. Yeah, I'm 60. <coughs> well, now, don't keep him too long because he's bandaged up here and we want to get him. Okay, now. Now, the second place. This is here, eh? Yeah, there's a wonderful view here now. Close it together, please. Close it together? Captain Braithwaite, I wonder if you could Wait tell us there. briefly about your experience, sir. No, I don't care about doing so. Oh, you... not now? No, I'm not in the shape to do it. Oh, you're still feeling badly, Captain? Yes. Uh-huh. Was your head hurting slightly, or was I, it serious? I don't know much about it. Oh, is that so? Have you seen the uh, superintendent of the lighthouse service yet, sir? Yes. <coughs> oh, then he'll make the report. Oh, yes. Everything. I see. It all went so suddenly, naturally, that uh, it's difficult to say, sir? I don't know nothing about it, are you? I know we're 200 and over the water. Your men looked in splendid shape, the uh, three others that we saw this morning. Yes. <coughs> well, they weren't in very good shape yesterday. They all stood at gallantly. Yes. They made a game battle, sir. Yeah. We all congratulate you, sir. Thank you. Captain Jenks, could you just Jenks. say one word, sir? B-I-N-K-S. Not Jenks. Binks. Jenks, sir. Binks. Binks. Oh, Captain Binks. Much better. Could you just That's give us one uh, little message about your well, I'm experience of picking up these brave men, sir? In about a minute and a quarter yes. from the press report, sir. Yes, that's true. That was splendid seamanship, sir. Well, it's great credit to the ship's company. Who was in uh, charge of the first boat to reach the sea? The fifth officer. The fifth officer? Yes. Uh, how many did he succeed in uh, getting into his boat? Six. Yes. How many did the second boat pick up, sir? Two. Two. Thank you, Captain. Uh,